This video follows on from the Introduction to DFDL video. In this video, we look at some of the components of the DFDL schema and explore how you can create a DFDL schema to model a pipe delimited text data format and a fixed length text data format. As we learned in the introductory video, DFDL stands for Data Format Description Language. DFDL is a powerful modeling language from the Open Grid Forum. DFDL is not a data format and it does not dictate how your data must be formatted. Instead, DFDL is a language for describing a text or binary data format in a way that is independent of the data format itself. In our introductory video, we looked at an example of a fixed length data format. We said that you can create a DFDL schema that fully describes the fixed length text data and then use this with any DFDL processor. And that the DFDL processor uses the DFDL schema to parse the data and create the required data structure. Let's look at the content of that DFDL schema. A DFDL schema is actually an XML schema with additional information that describes the physical format of the data. Here we can see the XML schema entries that describe the logical data. But this is not enough information for a parser to translate our fixed length data into a logical structure. We need to add information that describes the physical format of the data. The additional information is added in the form of XML schema annotations. An XML schema annotation provides additional information about an XML schema object, such as an element, type or group. There are two kinds of annotation, documentation and app info. The documentation annotation is used to provide a readable description for an object. However, the app info annotation is intended for programs. With DFDL, we use app info annotations to describe the physical representation of the data. The value of the source attribute determines that this app info annotation relates to DFDL so that other processors ignore the annotation. The description of the physical representation of the data takes the form of special DFDL XML elements that contain DFDL properties. It is these DFDL properties that describe the physical data. Here we can see some of the DFDL properties for the salary element. The DFDL properties describe the salary element as a fixed length, right justified, ASCII text decimal number that is 10 bytes long with a decimal point in the eighth byte. The DFDL annotation shown here is in what is called attribute form. The same information can be conveyed by using a more compact syntax known as short form where the DFDL properties are carried as attributes directly on the schema object. Here we see the DFDL short form annotations for all the elements in the sequence. The DFDL properties specify that each element has an explicit length and define the length of the element. The date joined element has additional DFDL properties that specify the date format, and the salary element has additional DFDL properties that specify the number format. We also need additional DFDL annotations to describe the record element and the sequence within the record element. For the record element, we have a DFDL property that specifies that the length of the record is implicit which means that the length of the record element is determined by the length of its children. 
for the sequence, we have a DFDL property that specifies that the sequence is ordered. This indicates that the child elements always appear in the order that they are declared. Notice that our original XML schema entries can also describe the same logical data presented in a different data format. For example, here we have the same data in a pipe delimited format. As with the previous example, we have to add additional information that describes the physical format of the data so that a parser can translate the data into a logical structure. This time, the XML annotations are a little different. We still have DFDL properties that specify that the length of the record is implicit and that the sequence is ordered. However, in this DFDL schema, we have a couple of additional DFDL properties on the sequence. The properties specify the character that is used as the delimiter, in this case, the pipe character, and that this character occurs between the elements, but not at the beginning or end of the sequence. This type of delimiter is known as an infix separator. The date joined element still has a DFDL property that specifies the date format, and the salary element has a DFDL property that specifies the number format. But instead of specifying explicit lengths for the elements in the sequence, the DFDL property specifies that the length of each element is delimited. This means that the length of the element is variable and is determined by looking at the delimiters in the data. When we use a DFDL processor to parse our fixed length data with our fixed length DFDL schema, the parsed data is exactly the same as the data that we get when we use a DFDL processor to parse our pipe delimited data with our pipe delimited DFDL schema. This is because in both cases, the data is logically the same. It is just presented in different physical formats. When we remove the delimiters and the padding, we are left with the same data. This distinction between physical data and logical data is very important, as we will discover in future videos in this series. So far, we have looked at what is involved in parsing a single record. We need to add a few additional schema objects in order to process a set of repeating records like this where each record is separated by a new line. Here we have the XML schema objects for a set of employees that contains a variable number of records. And here we have the additional annotations that we saw previously, the annotations that are required to describe the physical format of the data. We add a property to the outer sequence that defines how the records are separated. In this case, we use the NL entity to cater for new line characters and the WSP entity to cater for zero or more white space characters that might follow the new line. As before, we define the position of the separator as infix. We change the length of the record to be delimited because each record is a variable length and is delimited by a new line. Because the record element now repeats, we add a property to tell the DFDL processor how to establish the number of occurrences of the record element in the data. We specify parsed, which tells the processor to keep reading occurrences of the record element from the data until no more occurrences can be found. And finally, we specify the length of the overall employee's structure as implicit. So now we are able to parse a file of delimited entries and create individual records for each entry in the form required by the program that processes the records. Thank you for watching.